Now, Fez asked me a, I w- I'm going to say etiquette question yesterday about um, people's candies dishes here at the place. Yeah, the, a candy dish out on someone's desk. Is that just open anytime, 24 hours a day, the candy's sitting there? Or is that just for can- candy that you can have when you're there interacting with that person? You have some business in their office or at their cubicle, then you take a piece of candy. Before you ask that question, how are you eating people's candy? I am taking it pretty much any time, 24 hours a day. Because you're in, you said you're in here at night, right? Yeah. Because your TV's not working. So he's become Earl. Uh-huh. Fez, Fez, for the last month, he hasn't had television or computer at his house for a month. And if you think about it, why else would you be home? It, it really should be called the television and storage, uh, uh, you know, storage center. <laughs> it, it's only to sleep at and watch TV. There's nothing else to do there. So your life has been a nightmare. Right. You're going in the offices eating candy, and you're basically saying, hey, that's okay, right? That's okay, because if you put out a dish of candy, then you got to expect that it gets taken. That that people, when you put out the dish, that's putting out the welcome mat, people. And that's saying, help yourself to this candy. I don't know how you would come up with that. It's in there, on their desk in their office, it's theirs to be distributed as they see fit. What you're saying is the only way that you can keep candy is in the drawer of your desk. That when you take Mm. your property out, put it on top of your property, now it's red china and it's open to anyone. (laughs) I'll go so far as this. Not only is it not your candy, you shouldn't be entering people's offices when they're not there at night. You know they've gone home. You're going into their office eating their candy when they're not there. But the candy dishes, it's you're welcome to it. And just no, because how do you they figure, went home, you're do, not welcome to it anymore? How do you figure that you're welcome to it? Because they put it out there. They want that to give it to That doesn't make anybody welcome to it. Your computer's on your desk. You've got your... I mean, you're the stapler fucking worry guy of all time. Right. Do you say that you have to put that staple away, or is it open to everyone? If I had a bowl of staplers, you know, that said anyone can use these. But the... And no one has ever said anyone could use this candy at any time. Mm. What you're saying is, when you come into this office, have a piece of candy with me. Relax. This is a fun spot. Not to fucking come in. I'll even go so far as this. I find it to be in bad taste when someone just walks into an office, grabs some candy, and walks back out again. If you have business with that person, you're talking to them, I have a piece of candy. Please help yourself. I have never just start taking their candy in front of them, and I don't think you would either. I think you're only comfortable with this candy when they're not around. Do you think, uh, if you're saying it's open for everyone, why not take the whole bowl? Put it in your T-shirt. I'm going to walk into the elevator and then go to the movies. You wouldn't do that. No, because I'm following the rules of one at a time. I may make a few trips to that person's office, but I'm still only taking one at a time. Who set up that rule? I think that's just I think that's the courteous part of this. According to who? I think it's 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 unacceptable if the person's not there. And I would also say, could I have a piece of candy? What you're doing and what you want credit for is stealing. And I'm not going to get it to you. I'm not giving out fucking stealing credit today. No, this is like someone putting the garbage out. And if anyone wants to root through it and get an old microwave oven out of it, they could take it. If the garbage is in my house, you're not able to come into it. It's only when I actually throw it away. You can't come into my home and start going through my trash. That would be fucking antisocial and sick. Uh, Rob. Rob, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, buddy. Yeah. I uh, just Fez, by your logic, you're saying that I can walk into your office building and just walk into somebody's office and take their candy. No, this the candy is out there for other serious XM employees. Says who? That's what the person put it out there they, for. How do you know what they put it out there for? Some people might have candy on their desk for themselves. I know. I keep snacks for myself. 
But I think there's a difference also between if it's an office or a cubicle. What about this? I bet if the person has a fucking Hershey bar, Fez feels fucking comfortable to go up, break off a piece of the Hershey bar, and start eating it. Why? They left it on their desk. This is candy that's put on display. You're a thief. Why don't you have the balls to ask the person you're stealing the candy from? You don't want to. You don't want to walk up to them and say, uh, "You want me to take your candy in the middle of the night, don't you?" Because you will see the what on their face. That candy is set up for their socializing with the people who come into their office. There's. I find it in bad taste. If that person's out to lunch, here, here's the deal. If the candy's on my desk, Fez, uh -huh. come and take it. You and I have that kind of agreement. Sure. You and the woman in promotions, you and the woman in booking, you and the sales manager, you don't have that kind of friendship with them. You have a business acquaintance with them. And that's why that candy's out there. I don't think there's any difference between me stealing people's food from the fridge late at night and Fez stealing candy. We're both thieves. It's just that I admit it. No. That is true. And that's no. the only acceptable thing about you, Dave, is unlike Fez, you don't act like you're doing the right thing. Yeah. You slink around in the I'm dark all, like a fucking ex cat burglar. Exactly. That I'm, food in the fridge I'm isn't happy. for public consumption. The How candy in the bowl it, is. It's in a public Says kitchen. Who? It's in a public kitchen. Says who? You're trying to tell me that the woman who put the candy on her desk has no more right to that candy than anyone else in the fucking building since it's now for public consumption. I'll give you another fucking thing. Let's suppose I I have a fucking party at my house. I invite everybody over. And I have put out a bowl of fucking chicken wings. You don't come over and take fucking half the bowl for yourself, right? Right. You know mm -hmm. that it's not all... That, it, that there are fucking basic rules to it. The feeling is this. You don't have the balls to say to the person who's putting the candy out, I come in your office when you're not here and eat the candy. He knows he's doing something wrong. Yeah. I and know I'm doing something that, wrong. If you did that, uh -huh. then you would have a socially binding agreement between the two of you. And I'd be like, well, how nice of that person. But for you to sneak in after they leave at five, I, I know that the fucking doesn't, woman doesn't leave in five and go like this. I hope the night crew eats all my candy. Because <laughs> she puts that candy out there because people go like this. So nice that you have candy when we're here talking. This is nice. She wants to hear yeah. people like her candy. That person should expect it, though. They shouldn't be shocked if their candy is gone from people taking it when they put it out in a candy dish. In their office. Their office. What if they like eating candy instead of like sandwiches? What if that's their their food? I mean, if you Ryan, know. New York, you're on a fest. Hey guys, I uh, just want to let you know I just got an email about how I've been taking too much candy off of the main desk. I work for MTV, so they buy everyone's lunch and they get desserts and snacks for everyone. And I don't make too much money, so you know I take the food home with me just to try to save money. And you know I just got an email how I've been taking too many sandwiches and too much. It's, uh, and it's fucking, seriously, for me, that's rules of dismissal. <gasps> you no. are, you are a glutton, and your gluttony is bringing this company down. No. Steven of Virginia Beach, Chairman of Fez. Yeah, I, uh, keep a candy dish on the corner of my desk, and I fill it about once a week, but I never see anybody take it. It's just money out of my pocket filling this candy dish. Right, and you <laughs> expect it at this point. But it's, I don't think there's ever going to be, if you walk in, let's, I don't know who's got the candy out there, but let's say it's promotions. If you walk in, have a piece of candy, I think that's fine. That person's not there, you go in and eat candy, that's insane. That doesn't happen. It's no different than if I have beers in my fridge, Dave is fucking welcome to beers in my fridge. If I'm sleeping, I don't want him coming into my house and taking a six-pack home with them. <laughs> that would be fucking insane. <laughs> if I keep beers in my garage for all of us, well, yes, that's great. But don't come over and take a case of beer out of my garage. <laughs> and the, the difference here is you would not be saying this to the person who put the candy out. You wouldn't be saying in front of the bosses, I like to go into the <laughs> offices and eat candy when all you people have gone home. <laughs> You want to know something, Fez? What's that? I'm going to give you $10. I want you to buy your own candy. 
So you don't get the Ron and Fez show fired because you've been rooting around in the middle of the night stealing fucking candy. It's really terrible. What kind of candy is it, by the way? Peppermints. Ooh. But it's those soft peppermints that I like so much. They kind of melt in your I mouth. I love peppermints. I do. Uh, here's Lisa in Georgia. You're on Ron and Fez. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Um, I keep a jar of M&Ms on my desk, but when I leave in the afternoon, I lock them up because if I came, like when I come back in the next morning, they're all gone. So I lock them up at night, and that way I know who's getting my M&Ms. Now, why do you put the M&Ms out? For the people who I work with during the day that I actually see and interact with. So you want them to say what to you? Oh, thanks for the candy? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, Fez, you, now, because that's why people do stuff. Thanks for the courtesy, right? Right. Do you stop by in the, in the morning? Oh, thanks for your hard candy last night. I was in there about quarter to 12 when I was masturbating on your fucking chair. Really enjoyed the candy. You don't bring it up to him, right? No, I don't say that. Why no. not? Because I don't think anything is needed to be said. Because you're ashamed. You're ashamed. That candy is out there for anyone, Ron Bennington. Then walk, then walk into that fucking office and tell that person, since the candy is for anyone, I fucking put it in the middle of the night. I bet they start to hide their candy dishes. They should. Everyone should hide all their food. Anything that can be consumed, they should hide from us. Hard, hard Rock Johnny. <laughs> <We're> just animals. <laughs> You're on a Fez. Hello, boys. Yeah. I, uh, I always have a giant thing of candy in my office, which I'm sure is no shock. But <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm going to faint. <gasps> listen. Listen here, candy thief. Cut it out. <laughs> so, you know, I think if, you know, if my office is open, I'm in my office. Please, feel free. Come in. Share a piece of candy with me. If I'm not there, what the hell are you doing in my office? It is wrong that you're in anyone's office in the middle of the night. Now, if we found out, when you guys get mad if anything's touched in the office, right? <laughs> yeah. You're like, somebody was in this office. And why would this be any different? <laughs> you don't belong in someone's office after hours when they're not there. We've stolen garbage cans, candy. It's fucking embarrassing. <laughs> And you you would not have the balls to tell these people, I come in your office at night stealing candy. And what you want, Fezzi, is to do this, and I'm going to say slight antisocial behavior. I don't think we're bringing down the republic. Uh -huh. But what you want is for us to agree that you're doing well. What you need to be is like Dave, a pirate who knows he's a pirate. Yes. He doesn't care. No. And Johnny. Would it hurt you to put some carrots in a bowl and have them sitting in your office? I actually, to be honest with you, I don't eat that candy. I, I have other better snacks than the candy that I eat myself. But why do you put candy in your office? Because people enjoy candy. You're a man. That's a woman's fucking thing. <laughs> I don't know. People come in, they sit down, they relax, they have a nice Hershey's kiss. I, I, that is a girl candy, uh, that, though. Yeah, that's a girl thing. That's a girl candy. Absolutely. Well, I'm a girl. What am I going to do? You might as well have Skittles. All right, Johnny. All right, boys. Peace. Yeah. Um, here is Elizabeth, our good friend Elizabeth in Philly. How are you, darling? Hey, Ronnie. How you feeling? Good. Um, my mother-in-law has a candy dish that she keeps near her. So, um, cause she's diabetic, so when her sugar drops, she has the candy readily at hand. And, um, I think it would be kind of rude if I ate all that candy. It's and medicine. Then, yeah, and she, she would need it at one point. I mean, Fezzi, you should know that better than anybody. These are holiday candies that came out during the holidays. <laughs> steal it, Fezzi. I'm not, I'm not steal, I'm not eating someone's insulin in the night. Take that too. Well, we need, if you told me you were doing this candy, you could put it with my booty. <laughs> All the stuff I still have O&A's office and everyone else's. Once uh, Dave t I, uh, came into the office with some food, and he took a bite out of it and then threw it away. Turns out he just took someone's food from the fridge <laughs> and then didn't like it and threw it out. <laughs> so wrong. <laughs> what do you mean you're doing the same thing? I am taking publicly <laughs> offered food. Public Not someone's lunch with their name on it. No, let's get something straight. It's offered when they're there. Just like when I'm home, come over and use my pool. But I don't want you and your buddies coming over swimming at 3 o'clock in the morning when I'm away for the weekend. Yeah. And you and I can have an we'll agreement. What's mine is yours. I have no problem with that. Mm -hmm. You don't have that agreement with those women in those offices. 
And quite frankly, Fez, and I'll fucking back this up, you've got the reputation as the weirdo here. <laughs> You're the nut in this fucking place. And people say the receptionist is afraid of you <laughs> and the security guard is afraid of you today. <laughs> Again, I got snubbed. Did you hear what she said to me? Oh, you got the cold enough for you? Yeah. You know why? You got a whole weather conversation. I couldn't get a good morning. You know why I got that? Why? Because there's candy safe around me. I'm not a fucking thief. Good for you. And if I did take their candy, I just as soon slit their throat. Because uh, I'm either in all the way or not at all. I'm not like you trying to walk a wire and still act like you're a fucking good person. Because look, that is you. You are no better than Hello. Dave McDonald. I'm so much better than Dave McDonald. Mm, just admit. Seriously? Yes. No. You do the same things. You take other people's food. Just admit it. It's, it feels great when you admit it. I help myself to candy that's been put out for people's consumption. Thievery. During work hours. Thievery. You don't belong in anyone's office. Let me ask you this. Would you be comfortable walking around Steve Blatter's office in the middle of the night? Would he be fucking happy to know you're in his office? No, he would wouldn't you, want me in there. Would you be happy to be in uh, Scott Weinstein's office? Greenstein's office? No. What if they had candy? What if you were in Jeremy's office? No, he wouldn't want me in there. So what makes you feel free to go in their underling's office? Why don't they deserve the same fucking privacy as you? That's fucking insane. You don't belong in anyone's office in the middle of the night. And if you're doing it, keep it to yourself. Try and get away with it. Mum's the word. Um, here is... Jack and Maine, you're on a fez. I can see uh, Rusty stealing, but Jesus fez, you steal enough from him. I buy your own fucking candy, you cheap prick. He's also been known to take uh, things of paper home. Printing paper for himself. Really? And he takes copy paper home. Yes, I've done that. And then copied things on the computer for work. Do you tell the people here at work that's where the supplies are going? No. Because you know it's wrong. You know it's wrong. He's conflicted because he likes doing it, but he doesn't want to admit. admit he it. needs to admit it. Just admit it, and admit, then you'll be uh, like myself, it. and you'll feel happy. Admit it that when your mom used to yell at you and call you an embarrassment and hit you, uh -huh. admit that she was right. No, I won't. This was all the things that she feared. I know my she mom was right. was right. My mom was. You know what you do, you do, Fez? You keep secrets. Dirty, ugly secrets about yourself. Filthy Because secret. you're ashamed. I help myself to a peppermint candy or two, <laughs> is what I do. What else? Over and over and over. All night long. And by the way, who wants to eat one of those peppermint candies in the middle of the night? They don't fucking help out with any hunger. There's got to be some Jolly Ranchers around here somewhere. Why don't you steal. do yourself this favor? We're supposed to get a blizzard this weekend? Uh-huh. Make sure you get snowed in here and just fucking have yourself <laughs> a goddamn gourmet holiday. <laughs> well, then it would be an emergency situation. Oh, I hate to see this place in the middle of the night. Fez also loves the those four-minute meals in the vending machine. What is that? There's uh, vending machine meals like little like chicken parmesan that you have to pay $8 for. It's, it's fresh direct. It's meals in the vending machine. He pays like eight, seven, eight dollars for them. Does he buy you one? Uh, he has once. Pepper, you? Never got a four-minute meal. <laughs> Tonight is one of the nights Fez pays off his losses. Crush this fucker. <laughs> no! <laughs> I thought they weren't going. Good news. You know what they're known for? What? Fine steaks. Oh, yes! I fucking... Oh. I haven't had a steak in two months. And then this fucking candy thief is just enjoying <laughs> the hell out of his life. Eating four-minute meals. Peppermint. Fez doesn't like and a upscale. Peppermint afterwards. <laughs> he really doesn't like upscale food that much. Oh, Fez? <laughs> Vending machine entrees and candy. There, there has never been a city wasted on anyone like <laughs> Manhattan is on Fez. You should come down by me, Fez. You'd love it in Jersey. We we'll sit and watch, watch you eat polio string cheese. You can't get off that string cheese thing, huh? Have Slurpees. Also for eight dollars at the Seven <laughs> Eleven. Oh no. Now, Mikey Boy is going to be there with us tonight. If he passes out, go through his pockets, Fez. That's your deal. I'll split with you. Mm. Do you ever split, Fez? No, not usually. <laughs> no. 
How much of that food did you eat last night? Like fucking Dave was eating it by the fucking <laughs> giant plate full. I had a couple of plates. Right? Really? I had yeah. Four plates. I was really hungry. Four of those monster plates. Most of it was not good, but uh, some of those sandwiches were okay. The mini hot dogs were good. Mm. And the Heineken. <laughs> How many did you have? I don't know, eight or nine or something. I don't know. There were people there that were pretty tore up, though. That you was always nice to see. You know what fucking killed me? Um, I didn't recognize anyone. I mean, not even like, oh, I don't know these people's names. I didn't even recognize them from the hall. Right. <laughs> I have no idea who works here. And the whole point about getting us to leave our great fucking studio on 57th Street is, oh, you guys are going to be, you know, feeling the heat of the building. You're mingling with everybody. Never happened. Well, they put us on 19, so that never that didn't get us to meet anyone. And then now they have us on 37, so we don't meet anyone really up there either. We work here. There's the fucking we're here every day. Yeah, but you're, you, we don't walk. You, you're in the studio for four hours, and and then and then a, 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 maybe a meeting, and then you're out. You only meet people when you're working in your office, I think. Or drinking. And our far office is, is away from everyone. <laughs> they keep putting us away from people. It was a lobby of strangers <laughs> last night. It's like they brought in central casting and just brought in extras. Steve in New Jersey. What's up, buddy? Yeah. So I have a guy question for you. Say it's like, you know, 1145 and you're rooting around someone's office or getting ready to. And then you realize that they're actually still in their office. Do you really think the excuse that, oh, I just wanted a peppermint? We're going to, like, protect you from being looked at a little differently? You don't belong in anybody's office at night that isn't there. You just don't belong there. If they're putting out a bowl of candy, it's an invitation. Is, it, is the door open or are you opening a door? I'm opening a door. That's not a fucking invitation. <laughs> it's B&E. Good for I you. Don't break anything. These people's trust. You eat. Maybe you... <laughs> Just people's trust. So fucking true. Maybe it didn't be, but you eat. You fucking definitely eat. Scummy the scumbag. I love it. Gotta be scumbagging. I wish you knew. I wish you eat. I wish you told me candy. Then you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna fucking invite a bunch of people. Down since you're cl so close mm -hmm. with them, I'm inviting them to your big Christmas party tonight. No, uh, don't. This is gonna be expensive enough. I wish he told us. This before I'd I'd be getting I'd I'd be casing some food for Fez when I do one of my jobs. I'm not taking stuff out of the garbage can. I'm taking stuff out of a candy dish. I can get you a sandwich. Don't I won't tell you how, but I can get you a sandwich. I can get you a sandwich by two fifteen. I'm gonna have a four minute meal. You want a toe? I'll get you a toe. I'll get you a toe by three o'clock. <laughs> oh, I'll get you a toe. <laughs> I'm gonna sit here and finish my coffee. Uh, Wolverine, you're in my Fez. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. You should probably call the restaurant and tell them to have extra mints out if Fez is going to be there tonight. Oh, he's a mint taker, this one. Yeah. It would be nice if they had a bowl. I would enjoy them. You got a cinnamon tooth. You do. Identity guard. A lot of yeah. shopping going on online this holiday thievery. season. A lot of thievery. It takes a thief to tell you about thieves. And here's Fez Watley. It's Identity Guard. If you're going to these websites and you're buying stuff, you're putting your credit card numbers out there, bank account numbers, social security numbers, addresses, phone numbers. It's all floating in cyberspace, and it's right there for the picking. You need to be protected. Go to Identity Guard at IdentityGuard.com. They've already protected over 25 million people, including myself, who was getting ripped off out of my bank account until I got Identity Guard. Yeah, you almost lost half your candy money. <laughs> the money you're making on the free mints upstairs. Identity Guard, they patrol the sites where identity thieves hang out, and if anything funny's going on with your financial information, they let you know. They send out a notice right away, and they jump on top of it. Plus, they also have a $1 million loss reimbursement insurance policy, so if something does go wrong, you are covered with Identity Guard at IdentityGuard.com. Go to IdentityGuard.com, that's IdentityGuard.com for total protection. Identity Guard. Making it okay to trust again. Talking about trust, remember when we had some problems when we first got here? The people were coming into the studio at night. Yes. And they were eating in here and stuff. Leaving soda cans and stuff behind. Doing the same thing as Fez. Just opening up a door to some place that wasn't there. Because we can't lock the door here at night. The company doesn't allow that. They don't allow you to lock the office up either. 
They got to keep everything open. Right. But it isn't me. It doesn't make everything just fucking okay to walk around like a goddamn rampaging Viet Cong. You walk around here in black pajamas at night? No. And blowing, I'm not blowing a fucking trumpet to keep the GIs awake. And I'm not vandalizing anything. You're stealing candy. The fucking lowest of all fucking crimes. If you get fucking in jail, the people that they will, the worst criminals will fucking shiv. The kid fuckers and the candy eaters. They're the two. They are the two. Fez is in double trouble in that case. Even Earl would know this is wrong. And he would be in here at night taking a fucking shower in the goddamn sink. He takes a fuck. I walked into the sink one night, and Earl was sitting in there scrubbing his back with a big scrub brush. What else you stealing? I am what not. What else are you fucking helping yourself to? I'm not stealing anything. I'm enjoying some candy that was put there for the holidays. I steal magazines. Here's Chris in California. Chris. Hey, Ronnie B. How you doing, brother? Good, man. I got a I got a whole theory about this uh, this uh, late night foraging by uh, by Fez. I think it's because he's turning himself slowly with that wig and those ridiculous glasses into a human raccoon. He's just up there foraging for food in the middle of the night. And next thing you know, he's going to be tipping over garbage cans out behind the fucking studio. I hope, I, I hope you're not raccoon boy. I am not scurrying through dumpsters to take food home to my babies. Here's Eric in Missouri. Hey, Ronnie B. Yeah. I'm just wondering, uh, based on Fez's uh, theory here on the candy being an open invitation, if I'm, like, sneaking around the neighborhood, peeking in windows, and my neighbor's wife is naked, did she invite me to come in and get a little? No, but if she was put on display and the husband said, here, this is for people to take, then, yes, you could. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, we have a guy calling here as Bobby Flay. Yes, sir. Hey, it's Bobby Slade. I want to wish Rob Fez a Merry Christmas. I want to tell Fez to get out of the office and stop taking the candy. And uh, this is not your first white Christmas there, big boy. Remember the 80s. Oh, and 90s. And it's 70s. It's my first white Christmas. Early part of... He was doing a Coke joke. And it wasn't Bobby Flay. It was Bobby Slayton. Mm. And you would have got it if he would have fucking... If they would have wrote him up as Slayton and not Flay. We got to take a break here. But Hicks has been just... Pure. What's up with Fez Watley? What's going on over there? Well, I know I have this new weirdness going on. Uh-oh. Eating well, shit? No. Drinking piss? No, not that bad. But still weird. Snorting lines would come? Where I'm just having these... Oh, hold on, let him be God. grossed out for a second. Go ahead, Fez. Where I'm having these uh, stealing fantasies. Where I'm think anytime I go into a store, I'm now let me guess, stealing from me or just Sirius XM? No, like shoplifting, shoplifting fantasies. Where I'm in a store and I'm thinking, all right, I could probably walk out with this magazine. Well, do you? Well, I actually did yesterday. I went to the Federal Express place, and I was sending some. Uh, I was sending out a check for the party to Kathleen from the Bronx. Tonight's going on, me. I'm going to go tonight. Yeah, go ahead, Fez. So you have that big envelope, that big FedEx envelope. I wanted to put the check in something else, and I didn't have it. So I just took an envelope off of the shelf, one of those padded envelopes, put the check in that, sealed it inside the FedEx envelope, and then didn't pay for it. Just gave it to the FedEx people to send out. So how much did you steal? 79 cents. So, are you? Well, did it give you a little thrill? Yeah, it did. It's it's weird. It's like it, it, the odd, the weirdness about it is like this isn't scaring me, and it's not depressing me for a change. It's almost like exciting. It's like I'm thinking of something new, and that. And what, what new are you gonna steal? Um. Can I tell you what you got to go for? What's that, baby? Steal a baby. Oh, I think that's probably the ultimate prize. Yeah, it is. In shoplifting. And you've already got the sedatives. So you, you're now telling us you want to be a shoplifter? It's, it's when I'm in a store, it's all I think about. And it all started uh, d um, down the hallway from me in my apartment building. These people put up this Christmas wreath uh, on the front door. And, um, you know, I don't like... A wreath? A wreath. Mm. Yeah. 
It was... Um, Were there fish around it? No, wreath with a T-H. Mm. Why don't you pronounce it? Wreath. Go, go oh, ahead. No. Go ahead, tell your story. I'm fucking with you. So, but it's like, it's <laughs> it's got two little snowmen and Boston Red Sox shirts on it, and I don't like this thing. I don't want this thing. And every time I pass it by, I think I have to lift this off of their door and take it. But what are you waiting for? Well, because I don't want, I don't want to steal. I don't want to, I don't want to shoplift this thing. But it's like, it's, it's almost like it's calling to me. And then the other part of the fantasy you know, is... He, it, well, let me just interrupt here. You've gotten to the point now. You not only look like Uncle Leo, you're acting <laughs> like him. <laughs> Jerry, you didn't say hello! You have become Uncle Leo. And looks and now behavior. It's just nuts. It's And the second part of the fantasy is I want to take their Christmas wreath and not only... Not and, and the fish... Not only take it, but then put it up on my door so they see that I stole it. Uh, Dan, Toronto, you're in front of Fez. Hey, it sounds like Fez has finally hit puberty. Going to be such a mischievous little teenager. It really does have the 13-year-old girl feeling attached to it, Fez. It's a very weird feeling. I love shoplifting. <clears throat> but you do real stuff. I like stealing um, beer from fucking supermarkets. I like uh, still sometimes. Yeah, I'll still I'll still fucking lift a six pack or whatever. They're like I don't want to pay for this. This is good beer. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. That's called being an alcoholic. <laughs> what? Not a kleptomaniac. <laughs> I'll, um, still I'll still bottle. I'll still bottle shit too. <laughs> so where are you taking this, Fez? I don't now that you have our attention, which is why you want to bring in the boil or whatever, this isn't uh, you know, the news or anything else. This is the weird thing that you can show off. What is it you want to do with this now that you ha have us listening to you? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm just wondering. It's just a weird feeling of actually, even though it was like a 79-cent padded envelope, it still felt very odd stealing it, very odd in a good way stealing it and walking down the street and wondering if anyone was going to come check on me, you know, from the FedEx store, if anyone was going to call me on it. It was this weird thrill of getting back out the door after I did it. Yeah, uh, as the caller said, we all felt this when we were children. We all went through this. We all stole gum. It's a great high. Yeah, we all went to the record store and <laughs> stole the record. It actually happened to me when I was a kid. We used to take the records and then like oh, nice. shove them in our coats and stuff. Yeah. And this is pre uh, CDs. And I I had some down my pants and I was like leaving. <laughs> Holy shit! And a, a guy come over and he goes, "Is that a record in your pants?" And I go, "I don't think so." I go, "It's pretty big and it's definitely thick, but a record? I don't know. If you got anything we could weigh it with." <laughs> and then I said to my friends, "Tear!" And off we ran. <laughs> You know, it's the only time that you ever tore out of somewhere, you're a kid. Oh, you don't yeah. go tearing as no, an adult. No, fuck that. No. Um, you out of this motherfucker. Here is um, Paul Yerman Fez. Hey, Ronnie. I didn't know if you thought uh, Fez's best role was in Edward Scissorhands or uh, Little Mermaids. Mm. <sighs> you say one on a writer, Fez. But she actually oh. went for uh, real stuff. <laughs> Oh yeah. Are you going? Is what's the biggest thing you've fantasized about taking? Because now's the time to do it because it's the Christmas season. Right. Yeah. It's easy. Um. Oh, let me think. Because uh, there was. Oh, I think there was a sweater I saw in a store. You gotta get it. Imagine how good that thrilling sweater is gonna feel wrapped oh. around you. Put that shit on. Oh, you know what you ought to do is try to start sneaking sharp things on airplanes. You know, just, what is this doing here? And you come up with a fucking hat pin and start fucking waving it around the fucking strap hanger class where you buy your tickets for. Um, Here's our good friend's Gorilla Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, boys. You know, uh, this is a good thing, you know, because Fez is starting to fantasize about acting out a fantasy. Right, so it, I'm thinking that maybe there's another fantasy that he's going to want to act out. So if he starts small by stealing magazines and hat pins and uh, <laughs> and, and bad Christmas decorations, maybe they'll lead to that one big fantasy he wants to act out, and then Fez will be back. Uh, it could be. Here's what I'm wondering. 
Tomorrow morning, is Fez going to come in here and show us the Christmas reef that he has <laughs> pulled down, that Christmas reef that is up there? If you show that tomorrow, Fez, uh-huh. I bet you'll be eating uh, lunch at the cool kids table. Man, I want that wreath. I want that bad. It's every time I walk past it. It's all, I've even stopped and stared at it, wondering if they're watching me from the other side through their peephole. Instead, why don't you wonder if you're retarded? Oh, I, that's, the, that's, the, that's when I'm not in the hallway. What's the biggest thing that you would steal, Fez? Probably, um... I have to think because I uh, I need to make a getaway. I can't be lucky. Yeah, maybe like a DVD player. You're brilliant that way, Fez. The way that you have your getaway plan. I know how your getaway could be the door. Uh, we could do this. Uh, I'll send an intern out with you, and a camera, and we'll videotape you stealing. Wow, it's a, it's that's a huge step. Yeah, Not really. You do it. Let's do it. Who's down? Who doesn't know the difference between right and wrong anymore? I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send that fucking intern over with a uh, camera and a whistle, so that when you're heading out the door, you can start blowing the whistle and screaming, "Stop!" They've got a Christmas reef. Why you? I send you down to Puerto Rico and you steal reef for me. Eight six six run zero fez. Eight six six run zero fez. Um, here's uh, Jeff. You're on the run fez. Hey, Ronnie. Busy? Yes. Uh, hey, I've listened to the show for like five years. I'm really excited for you. You have finally found a hobby, being a kleptomaniac. And don't worry about your getaway, being a senior citizen, you know, 78, 79. They're not going to stop you. They always say, oh, the old guy, the poor old guy, he just, he was this confused. It's Uncle Leo. Do tonight's gonna be Adam, you're on the Run Fez show. Hey, Ronnie B. Yeah. Hey, I want to tell Fezzy if he decides to steal that reef, he better surveillance for some fishing line with a bell on the other side of the door. I know a lot of people in those enclosed apartment buildings do that, so people don't walk off with their stuff. Fez, if it's uh, if, when I'm done my paper route tonight, me, you, and Rap can go over and steal the Christmas balls off of Old Lady Hoyt's house and then throw them at her windows, and then we'll tear out of there. That's... It'll be fucking boss. I guess if my crime spree continues, that sounds like a plan. Well, my point was, you get my point? It's childish. Mm-hmm. Childish. And the weird thing is, this is the first time you've ever went through this? Yeah, I've never stolen anything before. Mm. Now you feel the need. He's somehow just hitting 13. He's hitting 13 and 80 at the same time. Is this like regression, or is it just, is there, is it like actual pro progression well, of... Yeah, see, here's the thing. It would be regression if he had done it yeah, before. All right. But when the rest of us were out, you know, at Mischief Night and all that dog <laughs> shit... <laughs> It's gate night in Jersey, y'all. Uh, Fez was sitting on his couch watching fucking Green Acres for the oh, 900th time. No. So now he's doing two things that you did when you were 13. Stealing stuff yeah. and pondering dating. <laughs> I'm a bit of a late bloomer. I don't think you're blooming. Um... Here's, uh, let's go over here to John in Miami. You're on my face. Hey, Ronnie. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Catholic like you, so maybe you can tell me if this is a sin or not. But about 40 years ago. By the way, if you're a Catholic ball, like me, you're the worst Catholic that ever lives. So, but then go on from that. About 40 years ago, I got on a bus, went to the mall, and I went to get a, uh, buy a, a manger scene at Burdine. Well, they had one that was about 59 bucks and another one that was nine ninety nine. So I changed the price tag, which back in those days you could do. You rip the tag off, and I put the t you know the fifty nine dollar, put a nine ninety nine tag on it. When you know they they sold it to me, I got back on the bus. I got off the bus. I left the damn thing on the bus, so I got nothing. Mm. But what if like somebody found that it changed your whole life? So maybe that's what you were there for, Jimmy. I'm running Fez. 
Hey, Ronnie, uh, says he's 13, you know, he'll be hitting puberty pretty soon. He might want to start having sex eventually. Uh, still waiting on that, right, Fez? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Still waiting on that. That makes me very, very nervous. Fez, I think that there's somebody out there for you who's willing to do something totally disgusting. So I wouldn't give up hope yet. I think you're ending up getting a fucking hand job in the old folks' home. I think it will work out that way. What makes you nervous? Uh, the intimacy of it. Mm. Of I just don't feel. I don't see myself as appealing. Right. So I. Uh, well, I'm worried about um, obviously turning the other person off, but I'm also worried about um, not being able to perform myself. Look at how quickly Fez is ready to get into the show if it turns into his therapist session. All morning, he didn't, you know, didn't jump in. No. But when we get into, I've been thinking about stealing. I'm worried about dating. Mm -hmm. That then he loves the show. Yeah, it clears up pretty quickly. You should do a show with a shrink, where it's just you and a shrink talking about your problems. Or you should talk about this with your shrink. Does it? Uh, we never seem to make any progress. Is always my point to you. Absolutely, I know. Because you just said the same stuff that you've said how many other times? A million. Yeah. So, but the stealing is new. I'll give you that. But it's also on such a minute level. I don't know what to say. It's almost like you came in here and said, I've just heard the most amazing band. They're called the Beatles. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's so far behind of where you should be in your, I'm, I'm ready to steal these tiny little things that don't matter. Now, if you told us you were stealing cars or you were starting to stick up banks... Sick. We'd be like, what the fuck? Um, uh, here's John. John, you're running Fez. Hey, I got a comment for Fez. Fez, I have got the, the, the perfect solution for you. Go home this afternoon and make you a nice wreath and then take it over there. And as you steal the other one, put the other wreath on the door. That way you won't feel so bad about it. And it'll be hilarious because they won't know where in the world this wreath come from. Why don't you just leave like a little calling card of the Reef Man? You just got reefed. Call yourself the Reefer. Oh, or don't fear the Reefer. It could be your fucking song. <laughs> and then you're constantly going like this, too. When is a Christmas wreath not a Christmas wreath? When it's no longer on your door. Could use a little cow more cowbell. All of times hey JJ, you're on Fez. JJ. Lost you, buddy. Let's go over here to uh Kevin. Kevin, you're on Fez. Hey buddies, yeah, you got it all figured out. This is Fezzy's elaborate plan so that Batman will finally find him and come and he can fulfill all those fantasies that he's had in his mind watching Batman 500 times alone in his apartment. Put the envelope down, asshole. You're the same person who stole that reef. Reef. R-E-E-F. Reef. <laughs> hey, what are you doing with this collection of toenails? <laughs> Oh, what do you mean? You're afraid of intimacy? You can call yourself the repeater. You've just been repeated, my friend. You're in a never-lasting loop. So what are you stealing big, Fez? You bring this story up. Are you going to go for it? Is this a, I want to be caught? Um, I definitely don't want to be caught because I would be petrified if someone nailed me on this. But then you would have this sweet relief that the finally you would be able to stop the voices inside your head. Yeah. What do you think? Does he want to be caught? Yeah, I think I think Fez wants to be caught. I think this. Not only does he not want to be caught, this is a made-up thing. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm not believing it. Because I don't think you would come in and say, I only did this little envelope worth 79 cents. I mean, it was just a taste, and, that, and he was surprised that getting that taste of it made him feel so good. Like he got away with something. How long ago did the did the envelope happen, Fess? Uh, like less than twenty four hours ago. What was the store? 
It was the FedEx store um, over on 48th. Let's give them a call. No! And ask them to come right. out their envelopes. I will. I'm taking you right over there, young man, and you are going to apologize and pay them off. Or they'll give you a broom and you'll work it off. We don't steal in this family, mister. Um, here's uh, Mike. You're on the Fez. Ronnie, didn't the Fez skill and start right about the time of Halloween where he's taking candy off the people's ass? No, but we did have a thing here where he was... Uh, stealing candy from people's desk at night. It's terrible. See, I don't think that was stealing. That was candy put out in a dish. No, they're not at the desk. It's stealing. Hmm. What was that, Rapidi? That uh, taking candy from someone's desk is not stealing if they're offering it to other employees. Oh. Cliff, you're on running Fez. Fezzy, why so effeminate? Why so cheap? Why so gay? <laughs> Look like you're trying to take this envelope, but I'm going to make sure you stay sealed up for a long time. The next thing you'll be licking is another man's asshole. No, the Riddler's not going to be in the next one. What have you done about your Riddler thing, Fez? Um, I, ha I, I honestly haven't progressed on that. Passing fancy. Uh, Jerome, you're on Fez. Yeah, when you asked Fez if he ever stole anything, didn't he say a CD player? That was your dream, wasn't it, Fez? Yeah, I said. I said. I think the biggest I could probably get is a DVD player. Hmm. Because this is what year where people still go out and get DVD players. Get a dual one, dual uh, VHS DVD player. Why don't you get a Victrola? Why don't you steal ste Steam Engine? Just fucking do the whole thing up. It's very steampunk. Yeah. Steal Steam Engine. Uh, why don't you steal an icebox? <laughs> <laughs> he seems to be stealing things that no longer have uses. He's a genius. <laughs> um, Shane, you're on my Hey, Ronnie, I, I think I figured it out. Fez is stealing this stuff because he wants to get caught, go to prison, and be forced into sex. Mm, might be the way, Fez. Prison rape. Pete, you're on my Fez. Hey, Fezzy, I think you should continue stealing, and every time you steal, leave a little riddle at the crime scene. You know what I mean? You might get in the paper. Yeah, the riddle would be, what kind of idiot would steal something that only costs 79 cents. You believe him, huh, Hicks? I think he stole his fucking envelope. I think he... I think you gave him a little high, because I, I remember the first time I started stealing shit, felt good as fuck. Oh, yeah. When you, but that's like a childish thing. Yeah. Here's what I think it is. Oh, no. Great to play off you guys. Um, here's uh, Charlie. You're on Fez. Ronnie, uh, Fez has watched Batman so many times, he's starting to take up the personality, you know, of a, a crime guy. When I was a little kid, I watched a Six Million Dollar Man episode, and I took the family radio and broke it, trying to turn it into a CB radio. My father beat the shit out of me. But it's just like a little kid who watches TV and goes, okay, that's real life. Is this what it is, do you know, Fez? The envelope well, bandit? Well, it's a real feeling. I don't know if I got it from watching Batman. But uh, it, it's a real feeling of, wow, I wonder if I could do this. Why don't you run down right now and steal something out of Rob Cross's office while we watch? Yeah, do it. Go ahead. Do it. Go. Go, Steely. Go. Bring it back. Come on. Bring it back to our fort. Grab it. And then go to your house and get potato chips and sodas for all of us. Oh, really? Potato and then you're in on the fort. What kind of potato chips? Sour cream and onion? Look at him. He doesn't even give it another thought. He just goes... Yeah. Fucking bananas. I'll be running over him. He runs, his heart will stop. Oh, good point. Every heart, every little fucking bit of that. So there he is. We can see him heading down right now. <laughs> Hopefully Rob is listening today. Oh, no, Rob isn't uh, working today. He's on vacation. There he goes. There Jesus he goes. Christ, fucking yeah. far away. Yeah, it is far. It's a fucking city block. <laughs> it's a city block. <laughs> 
No one fucking gets over. We're up in the air and gigantically long. So, uh oh, Coleman. Good girl! Good girl! There's Jeremy walking by. Oh, no. No, I hope he gets a laptop or something. Yes, we got something we can sell. And. I always see piles of CDs on the desk, but. Oh. Well, the CDs he says, please take. He better not come back with a CD. What's that? He walked right behind Jeremy the whole way. Yeah. Let's see what he's got here. It's like what you get? I got his tissue box. How do you feel? Uh, very weird because I took it out of his office and started heading back down the long hallway back here. Mm -hmm. And someone stopped and said, hi, Fezzi. And I immediately felt like I had been nailed. Who was it? It was Troy from the ONA show. So you think Troy is like a cop here? Yeah. I don't know. As soon as I heard my name, I jumped and I almost dropped the Kleenex box. Here comes Scott down the hall. I don't know what you're going to say to him. Shit. I think Troy might be a narc. Not you sure. You don't even have to fucking think. He got a sign to O&A. Oh, oh, here's somebody we want to help. It's Troy. Some of the bosses are the super villains. Yeah, they are. <laughs> They're the fucking worst. The rest of us pawns. So you feeling good about yourself? Yeah, it feels, it feels uh, a little interesting here. Why don't you uh, blow your nose with a stolen booty? Go ahead. And Do enjoy. it. Enjoy. Live large. Fuck yeah. Are they scented? Yeah, take all you want. Blow your nose like a girl, you know that? Take another one out and just stick your tongue through it. I mean, you waste it for all you care. Go ahead. Just poke use your, the mop? Yeah, yeah, poke your tongue through it. All right. Oh. Yeah. Here it oh, is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's always going to be a little residue, but it gets a laugh. Um, let's go over here to Eric. You're on running Fez. Hey, I wanted to say uh, maybe Fez's fantasy is uh, he wants to perpetrate a turd burglary. Um, Fez, don't let them get to you right now, all right? Sure. I'm going to fake this shit up. I'm going to send you out every day to steal shit for me. I'll be your Fagin. It'll be fucking perfect. Uh, let's go over to 202 Friends. Ask Steely Fez if he knows Steely Dan. They rock. Uh, not Kevin Smith said Fez started stealing from XM about four years ago. Hmm. Fez is desperate to be normal. Normal is fucking lame. What about Lou Reef, the Reef Thief? That's always from the Llama. Here's uh, TJ, you're in Fez. Hey, buddies. How you doing today? Yeah. I could use some help with my kids, my kids' Christmas list. Uh, Fezzy, do you think you can get your hands on a PS3 for me? See ya. You'd be like Robin Hood. Some of these items I worry about because they're going to set off the alarms when you go through the store door. Who's going to ca catch you with the fucking quickness? Be like fucking trying to catch a cheetah. What, a fucking security guard? Fuck them. Fuck them. Anyone standing between you and the door, Fezzy, take them out. Uh, Rob, you're on Fez. Hey, buddies, I think guys should use all the Kleenexes but one and then write a message on it that says, you've just been had by the Reef Tard from Reef Tard Island and put it back on the desk. Not bad. Why don't you do this? Rub it all over your ass and balls and put it back in his office. That's the way to go. That way you get back at him every time he blows his nose. He's fucking possibly getting AIDS. I think there's a lot of blood down there. Yeah. Oh. It's like open all source, just from the open source. Oh. What's wrong? I don't want to think about open sores mm. around the assholes. You brought it up. Um, Mike, you're on Fez. Hey, uh, Fezzy, maybe you can go home and steal some matches from the kitchen drawer. We can go back to the port, light our farts. <laughs> go steal some Playboy, and that way we'll build a fort around it. <laughs> uh, look at it. Oh, I was going to say that for it. I can't think of another word. What would it be another word What you would call it when you were kids when one kid didn't want to look? Um... We would say faggot. We'd say, look at it, faggot. It's a pussy. Look at it. Jizz sucker. See, I wouldn't even think of that at that age. 
But I don't even think when I said that when I was a kid that I, I meant even gay. Yeah, this is the fucking word. Fucking. Yeah. I just felt like, you know, you're not acting uh, masculine. Uh, James, you're on Fez. Uh, yeah, Fezzy, I wanted to ask if the next time you need to ask lube, if you're going to steal it or you think you can afford that. What about banana butt lube, Fezzy? You still into that? Um, uh, no, I probably won't be stealing that. So far, not using Let any. Let me tell you this. You don't want to take a dry candle up the asshole. Mm -mm. Lube that shit up. I feel with all those open sores down there, that might make it feel better. You're obsessed with the open sores, it's, aren't you? It's horrifying thoughts. It's still stuck in my head. Can I tell you something? That sure. shirt that you're wearing yes. uh, alarmed Marlo Thomas. I know. This has a gun on it. I know. It really <laughs> freaked her out. And I <laughs> just wearing felt... a, he was wearing a, a shirt that has a big gun and then bullets. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking so immature. It's badass, Ron. <laughs> um, right, you're on Fez. Hey, Fez, you going to be a sperm bank robber? <laughs> Only one person laughing at that, the person who said it. You're not thirsty, are you? Let's try to figure out who Fez is. Uh, you got no Christmas spirit this year, right? You're stealing it at Christmas. Uh, you hate dogs. You're a bad one, Mr. Grinch. You really are the Grinch. Um, let's head over, over here to uh, Dave. Dave, you're on the Fez. Hey, guys, the headline when it gets caught, reefer madness. Don't fear the reefer. He's fine. Uh, Jeff, you're on the run of Fez show. Hey, guys. Yeah, just like you uh, searched Fezzy's wallet the other day, why don't you search his computer, see if there's any stolen illegal music. Let's see if we can get Lars Ulrich on the case. How's Lars doing? He's selling his paintings, making some money for himself. That's like fucking five years ago. I think I'm sure you think he doesn't have any more paintings. I'm sure the guy's still fucking hoarding shit. Uh, Sean, you're on the run of show. Yeah, I just want to say that you guys can be the person who can be Fagin and fake it. Oh. <laughs> Fez, don't let these guys get to it. To you, you got to pick a pocket or two. That's my motto to you kids. All right, we're gonna break here. Uh, it's the run of Fez show. Uh, working on, Chris and I were talking about stuff that Fez could steal uh, here in the building. I think it would be, the biggest heist of all would be get into Scott's office. Oh, And yeah. he has signed E Street stuff in there. Him with the E Street band. That I happen to know, not only is it cool, but it would mean a lot to him. Yeah, and that's that, that would give you the fucking... Real juice of fucking loving, yeah, you know? Yeah, not a, you know, a box of whatever. Were you nervous uh, stealing your box of tissues? Absolutely. Yeah, I was very nervous. Because you look cool as a cucumber going in and out. You ought to also go steal some oranges. Use a couple oranges. Oh, hell yeah. Any bananas or grapes? Uh, definitely banana. All right, there's a fruit stand not far from here. Just grab it and start going. Would you be afraid to steal from Scott? Yeah, I would be terrified. How about bladder? Bladder, not as much, but it would still make me so, nervous. as the ranks go up, you get more and more scared? As the stakes get higher, sure. I see. I didn't know that the stakes were getting higher. And how are the stakes higher? See, in the case of this, instead of stealing a tissue from Bladder, you'll steal his wallet. Oh, shit. Well, that I'd probably have to get in his pants for. Oh! <laughs> yeah! He's straight. He's married. He's straight. He likes women. What's your next big robbery going to be, Fez? Um, let's see. I haven't decided yet. I know you haven't, but we're on the air, so you're going to have to make a decision. What about you steal something from Leeds? Hell yeah. Take, take his fucking desk. Take his desk chair. He's got a nice couch in there. What is it about stealing that you love so much? I'm, I'm doing everything. I, I've finally found a topic that you care about, and that's you and your weirdness. And I haven't really uh, talked to you in a long time. So I'd love to have this interchange. I'd love to have some kind of interchange today. Um, Tony, you're on a Fez. Yeah, Ron. Uh, Fezzy, I don't want you to start stealing. I don't want you to end up like Wynonna Ryder. A millionaire getting caught stealing is embarrassing, man. You do have a lot in common with her. Best years are behind and wasted potential. You know, doesn't it ever bother you when he does that snicker like that? I'd be out of my seat so fucking fast. 
But I was also going to add pixie good looks. Okay. Roll with it. Pound, clock, boom. All right, all right, so what are we doing here? Uh, we're doing a promo for Search, Search, Hurry Up and Search. Uh, this is a Hanukkah-themed one featuring Chris Stanley. Oh. Uh, do we have Hanukkah music? Yep, we're all set. What is this? This was a, um, I... I don't know this song. There we go, there it kicks in. It's, um, I believe it's called the Hanukkah song. Sounds like Fiddler on the Roof. We live our lives like a fiddler on the roof. <laughs> Alright, let's take it from the top. Okay. Of the music. Why? I hated that thing. Oh, you don't want to use it? Okay. I didn't like the vert, 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 vert. Take it from less than the top. Right, yeah. I'll come in after that part. Okay. See, this is the part I hate. Ron, did you know that poor Chris Stanley has never celebrated Hanukkah? That's probably because he's not Jewish, Fez. Here he comes. We've got the menorah lit. He should celebrate. Hey, guys. Uh, Watley thinks you should be celebrating Hanukkah. You should make a Hanukkah wish, Chris Stanley. Sure. Let me blow out these candles. <sighs> it's a menorah, not a birthday cake. You idiots. Oh, fuck. Idiots? But That's a plural. Well, yeah, because I told him to make the wish and... Oh, so you both were wrong about Hanukkah. Right, yeah. Mm. Oh, I didn't get it. I thought just he was. Oh, Catholic. Are you? Yeah, remember we said those prayers on the air? Yeah, and you were so bad at it. I got through them, though. You could easily say Catholic prayer <laughs> better than you. Oh, that would hurt me. Okay, let's go again. I don't know. Let, uh... Let, what's his name read my part? Because it's not that funny. All right. No, I uh, want to start this one from uh, past that uh, early part. Past what early part? That really slow part of the, the music. The song sucks. Is there another song? Uh, yeah, we can try another song. Let's do that. Ron, did you know that poor Chris Stanley has never celebrated Hanukkah? It's probably because he's not Jewish, Fuzz. Here he comes. We've got the menorah lit. He should celebrate. Hey, guys. Wally thinks you should be celebrating Hanukkah. <laughs> you should make a Hanukkah wish, Chris Stanley. Sure. Let me blow out these candles. It's a menorah, not a birthday cake, you idiots. Oh, fuck. Wait for the stage cues. All right, hold on. Let me... What are you doing? I thought you wanted it back. No, I want yours. You you sucked in that, Fez. I'm going to be Fez. Uh, you be me. Okay. And Chris, perfect. Fuck it. <laughs> Let's face it. When something works, it works. It's you right now. <clears throat> Music, please. Start it from the top. Ryan, did you know that poor Chris Stanley has never celebrated Hanukkah? That's probably because he's not Jewish, Fez. Here he comes. We've got the menorah lit. He should celebrate. Hey, guys. Watley thinks you should be celebrating Hanukkah. You should make a Hanukkah wish, Chris Stanley. Sure. Let me blow out these candles. <sighs> it's a menorah, not a birthday cake, you idiot. Oh, fuck. We both take it in the ass. No. But you can make <laughs> But you can make your Hanukkah dreams come true by playing Search, Search, Hurry Up and Search on the Ron and Fed Show. We'll be playing all through December and you can win great prizes autographed by your favorite Ron and Fez guests. <laughs> this cock tastes great. I love Hanukkah. <laughs> it's Happy Hanukkah from the Ron and Fez <laughs> Show. <laughs> oh, God. All right, can I just do one thing here? Sure. I think I should suck a, a smaller dick at the end of that, because oh. I was literally gagging on that. Delight has frozen. <laughs> what does that mean? 
the computer. This is stopped. the worst Hanukkah ever. That's probably because he's not Jewish, Ron. Oh, I thought we were starting again. Hey guys. Hi. <laughs> Watley thinks you should be celebrating Hanukkah. <laughs> That's right. It says so in the script. Oh fuck. Fuck you. No thanks. It's a menorah, not a birthday cake, you idiots. It's a happy Hanukkah from the Ron and Fez show. That's right. Ron and Fez. Weekday on the Vi with. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's terrible I could never do that. I never like just the water bottle alone I'll choke you. <sighs> I'd be the worst girl ever. <laughs> I'd be one of these girls. Just eat my pussy and shut up. <laughs> Eat it. <laughs> Eat my pussy. Why isn't that enough for you? This is the thing Laszlo won't give me the kind of fucking stretching room that I need. I don't get it at all. I thought I thought your role as Fez just then was genius. Thank you. I don't know where you. I think that should. I'm trying to get you role. into that game too. Oh, I would love to, but I don't know if Laszlo and I hit it off when he came. He in. hates your guts. Yeah. I asked him again yesterday <laughs> when I called him back. Well. Fuck Oklahoma. I stand by that. Uh, is, does the music work yet? Well, that last one with the keeper, we all agree? It I wasn't it. exactly uh, my vision. All right, so we got one down. Is there any more to do? There's one other one, a shorter one, with right. me and you. Why can't Chris be in it? Well, he was featured in the other one. This one uh, is, uh, is a shorter one. All right, give that to uh, the kid. Let the kid be up. <clears throat> Happy Hanukkah from the Ron and Fez show. What could be better than eight nights of gifts? A whole month of gifts. All through December, we'll be giving away great autograph prizes on our game show. Search, search, hurry up and search. You can play by following at 202 Friends on Twitter. So we're saying that search, search, hurry up and search is actually better than Hanukkah? A lot better. I love it. More days, more presents, and no messy menorahs to deal with. <laughs> search, search, hurry up and search on the Ron and Fed show. Uh, that's a keeper. That's good. Fez, it looks like you're the only one not having fun. You don't like these reads? Um, well, the first one wasn't exactly my vision, and I expected what, to what be in that, them, too. What, what does that mean? You are in it. Your character's in it. The Fez character's there. If you want to give me tips on how to like play you better, I could, I could try to change the direction. Why don't you bring up the fact that you steal now, Fez? Ah, fuck. Because I, I didn't do I didn't do my character backstory beforehand. Here's what I need you to do: follow him around, live like him, know what he's going through, steal when he does, fuck yourself in the ass with a candle when he does, okay. everything he does. Kind of like a stellar Stella Adler techniques type of thing. Kind of live the scene. I don't know what all those things work. Okay, I don't take acting that serious. All right, I act from here. All right. I understand. And here. Uh, uh. Why are you so anti-gay? I'm, I'm not anti-gay. I just I, maybe I don't understand it. And why don't you just me. say this then? These balls taste great. I'm gonna lick them some more. Just try it as a part. All right. Um, these balls taste great. Maybe I'll lick them some more. Ah! Oh, you do oh, lick balls oh, like it's disgusting. Oh. No, I don't. Fuzz, how come you never give me any other parts to play but Ron or Fed? Well, it's um. It you know, I can play it. Well, I know you can play it. Look but at this. Rockstar wants me. Look at that. Look. I Don't fucking it. turn around. <laughs> I see That's it. from Laszlo at Rockstar. Let me borrow your blue blockers. I'm going to go down there like a fucking star. There you go. There you go. That's right. Yeah, Laszlo, you said 15. I'm going to do it in 15. That's it. All right, let's fucking make this magic happen. This game's going to last forever. Fucking looks great. Does it? Sounds even better. I feel like I'm fucking sitting on the sun. That's it a good makes feeling. Things wor Not only that, there are thumbprints and scratches all over. Well, yeah, they're old. And I believe I see crotch sweat. No. <laughs> when you, um... Fuck. What's so wrong with the blue block? I, I can barely see through it. Oh, it's great. It looks like you were driving down the road, you hit a baby that fucking <laughs> shattered on your windshield. I prefer seeing the world through those glasses. 
It's, it's like you're looking at AIDS through a microscope. <laughs> That's what your fucking glasses look like. Well, yeah, I guess I got to clean the lenses. Do you? What do you clean them with? Oh, my shirt. Your asshole? No. Oh. Why? Why do you moan at shit like that? Like, it's the worst thing you've ever heard. Sticking his glasses in the back of his pants and cleaning them with his asshole? That's disgusting. You're right. Now that you put it that way, he is disgusting. He calls that running after the car wash. I don't do that. Why? Just the process of it. Mm. So he doesn't make sense? Yeah, I guess not. Crazy fuck. Come on, I, I think I make plenty of sense. Do you? Yeah. Are you still reading your script? Because <laughs> you fucking sound like it. Hey, guys. It's a menorah, not a birthday cake, you idiot. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Who wrote this shit? I wrote it. Then it is good. Uh, Ryan, you're on Fez. Hi, buddy. Did Fez say he loves Hanukkah or he loves hard caca? Because <laughs> <That's not even laughs> fucking close. <laughs> but to answer your question, hard caca, okay? Now you're happy? Was it like freeze it? But in all serious, do you know that poor Chris Stanley's never celebrated Hanukkah? Never, not once? Doesn't he have a Jewish family? Oh, oh yeah, he does. <laughs> you didn't know that was the best? <laughs> I thought we were doing something real. No. <laughs> nothing is fucking real except Israel. When I'm in character, I'm in character. Sometimes I forget the script and I just fucking go for it. Our, our new promo should be don't steal your gifts like Fez does. Oh. And it could end with stop thief. That's my envelope. Uh, I don't know whether you heard the Fez stealing thing today. Yeah, I don't know. Did you believe it, or you think he was making it up? <laughs> I don't know. It's such a it's trivial thing to steal. And yeah. then and then when you gave him the opportunity to go steal anything he wanted out of the office, because Rob's not even here, right? And he no. took the Kleenex. I don't know. I mean, if you really wanted to loot. I'd should... have myself a new computer monitor right now. <laughs> yeah, no joke. Could well, Are you going to steal something tonight, Fez? Um, uh, if I, yeah, if I run into something that I really... That Why I, you... if, if, that I... Opportunity. If is never a fucking in comedy, either yes or no. No. There's a perfect place for you to steal, and that's the NBC store. All right, that seems high stakes to me. Okay, what's that mean? That means like, um, like I could end up really getting caught there, which has me nervous. All right, so what you're saying is you don't want to steal, and that the hour today was a throwaway. No, I mean, I, I, I don't want to steal, but I just have these fantasies about doing it. So when you have a murder fantasy, do you feel the need to share that in? Uh, no, no. Okay. I don't know. I'm trying to converse here. Do you know what I'm talking about? Just because you have a fantasy doesn't mean that you want to do it. Well, I don't know. I mean, if you're kind of fantasizing about something and then you do it and you get a thrill from it, why wouldn't you want to go back and do it again? Because he hasn't done it. I thought you stole the the envelope. The envelope? They give out fucking <laughs> envelopes there. They're, they are free. They ship. You can't get them in the mailroom upstairs. <laughs> Their envelopes are everywhere. Well, yeah, I haven't paid for mail. I'm not going to fucking dive into his insanity. Maybe you should go. Maybe that should be. The, we should go to like Macy's and see what the biggest the biggest thing you can steal. I'll film it. I'll I'll be the cameraman. This is like Triple X. Why don't you film him? Driving, going off the bridge, jumping out. And you know what's always funny about Van Diesel? Act like he was 18. Hey, you've been fucking with us kids too long. I'm like, Van Diesel, you're fucking 45 years old. What are you talking about kids for all the time? Dick. Yeah, dick. You're a fucking grown man and you're laughing over the nickname Dick? Triple X, was <clears throat> that movie fooled me. I thought it was going to be something way different than what it was. You thought it was going to be porn? I did. I thought there was going to be at least some kind of sexiness to it. Nothing at all. No. Fez, what's wrong? You um, shut down? Yeah, just uh, a little bit locked up. I'm sorry. Is it because you missed the giveaway by five minutes? Well, yeah, yeah that's, uh, that, that's running just a little bit late. Um, I don't get it all. I don't get any of this talk. Rob, you're on the Run Fest show. Hello, Rob. Oh, hey, Ronnie. Yeah. How you doing, buddy? Oh, it's Rob Cross. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, I got a call from one of the music coordinators who said that guy who used to have a Hitler mustache was going to my office and taking stuff. I didn't know they were going to put me on the air. I thought I was just calling Hicks. <laughs> 
Fez, were you in Rob's office? I, I might have been in there earlier. What's what did you day? take? Um, I needed some tissues. There's a tissue container missing. Missing from where? Yeah, my, my tissue container is missing now. Oh. From, uh, I guess, from Rob's office. Why would you take it? It was written. Um, just, uh, felt a, felt a, a little, uh, felt a little what? Flemmy. Uh, it's funny, I was, been here with you all day, you weren't Flemmy. Uh-uh. Plus, there's it's tissues like, here. I, I know you take candy off people's desks, but that's not candy. I have a, I have a dish of, like, uh, candy corn, you're welcome to it, or Reese's Pieces or something, but. Well, I thought that's. I thought the tissues were really for you know, anyone Jews who's through the office. Why? His, his office is actually far from here. You're not even supposed to be in there. But if it's an emergency. It wasn't an emergency, Fuzz. I was here with you. Why are they still sitting here if it was an emergency? Yeah, the bathroom's close to the house, but there's tons of toilet paper in there. Let's start and respect each other's privacy. Well, I mean, I guess it's just tissues. I don't know. I mean, I'm glad the music coordinators are looking out for me. Yeah, who exactly is bringing this up? Yeah, so it's not really important. Okay. I actually don't even, I don't even really know. One of the people who works with me on uh, one of the music channels is they calling. And don't, they don't know on. not to go in and out of his office. They respect that. Yeah. Would you want people in your office taking things? No, I wouldn't. And you didn't take just one tissue. You took the whole container down here. Yeah, that was in case I might have needed more. Like you're asking yeah. to be fired. And then you took that envelope, too, last night. Yeah. Rob, we'll make this up to you, buddy. I hope you enjoy your vacation. Uh, I'm glad it's just tissues and, you know. Well, that's where it super... starts, I guess. <laughs> yeah, candy's where it started, apparently. Well, now where are you tissues. driving? Like Mr. Magoo is just like, <laughs> hey, there's horns everywhere. Careful out there. Why are you saying careful? Somebody could steal his stuff? Well, I meant in the traffic. I hope I have some tissues left when I get back. Fezzi, you're welcome to all of them now, uh, now that I know you're Flemmy. And Enjoy. plus, he had his fingers in them, too, Rob. Yeah, well. You know, God I'll knows if they've, where they've been. Hey, tongue one, too. I'll be All right. back on Monday with a fresh box of tissues. All right, boys. Apologize about that, Rob. Talk uh, to you later. Okay, try, try and keep them from uh, copping other people's stuff. Thanks. we Will do. See y'all. Well, that was fucking humiliating. Are you proud of yourself? No, not really. I really I didn't say, want to get caught. I will say this. You handled it very cool. I wonder who fucking squealed you out. You had to run down there and steal something from Scott's office. Yeah. Or bladders. Mm hmm Like cash. I bet they have cash in their desk. Like petty cash? Like they probably have like a little Fuck box. Yeah. You know? There's fucking hundreds. I'll I'll say about this one thing about you, Fez. You don't fucking fold under questioning. You fucking held up. It's like a fucking car couldn't start in the morning. Why don't you just do this at him? You fucking bring my name up to him? Did you mention Hicks? No. Good. All Keep right. that fucking quiet. Yeah, I don't need my name coming up. You ever. fucking did. It was all your idea. You fucking remembered that I told you 17 times. Don't. Yeah, I only ran into two people down there. It could only be one of two people. Hey, what about this? You're on the fucking radio. They have radios. How could this happen? Do you think we're all inside your head? That's a fucking fireable offense you did, Fuzzy. But I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, everybody could hear it, but I, uh, I only think of two people that might have called, actually made the call to him. Who are they? Troy, who I ran into on the way back. And there was another guy in Rob Cross's office at the time. Seriously, you're about the stupidest criminal I've ever seen in my life. Troy. I'm just starting at it. You're like, I swear to God, there was this fucking place in my neighborhood. It was like a drugstore slash diner. Uh, guys I know, they fucking break in there and start eating downs, right? Grabbing downs, they got them all in their fucking pocket, living a life. One of them gets caught because the cops came in in the morning and found him laying on the floor, oh. down, down, 
with a hamburger burning on the fucking grill. And I couldn't figure out how it happened because he said this. I didn't even remember fucking cooking a hamburger. And I go like this to him. You know, there's something we like to do when we're robbing a fucking drugstore. Wait till we get home before we start eating the fucking pills. You don't think I want second holes? I'm not going to fucking eat them here. Did it take a little while for, like, pain pills to kick in? He, he, fucking, <laughs> he fucking ate eight and then so, fucking so, was hanging around going through stuff. We'll cook a hamburger. Fuck it. Started half a hamburger. just fucking burning when the cops get there. There's a fucking burger burning on the gr a griddle. What a fucking douche. <laughs> you better take that back, Fez. Uh, here's uh, Bud. You're on running, Fez. Hey, I'm seeing a pattern here with Fezzy. You know, he's stealing, he's doing drugs. Is he selling that stuff for drugs? Yeah, I'm not taking drugs. So that's not my motive. Just a, uh, a shoplifting fantasy. How's it a fantasy if you did it? What happened here today? What wall did you hit? You weirded out by Rob Cro Colin? Oh, sure, yeah. Kind of took the fun out of the fantasy. You got caught. So what? You're going to have to fucking go down and tell Bladder what happened. Yeah. I'm going to back you up 100 fucking percent. Thank like you. Like I did in front of Rob. So I saw you go in his office and I saw you take fucking shit. So there. It happened. Let him fire you if he doesn't like it. Let him throw you the fuck out. Well, it's just some tissues. They're your tissues? No. So you don't get to decide. It's just some tissues. Where does fucking, where the, where does the lines of morality start around here? Um, yeah, obviously not with J-Lo. What? You stole J-Lo? No, I was talking about the the new pictures. Huh? What's he mean, Hicks? I'm not sure anymore. We're talking about you stealing the fucking tissues out of Rob's fucking office. The gig is up. You've been busted. So what? Your little fucking stealing ring is done. That takes all the fun out of it. Who do you think fucking called Rob? I would imagine it was Troy. Why would you imagine that? Would you bet money on it? Um. Did I? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did I? I'm sorry. How much money? I, I would bet 50 on that. 50? Uh huh. Would you go 100? All right, 100. Would you go 1,000? No, I'll stick it 100. 100? Uh huh. All right, it was us. Why did you guys call Rob? To make you stutter and fucking freak out. Same reason why when we used to steal shit when we were younger, you'd always trip to one guy when you run away, so he'd fall down with the shit, and everybody would laugh. <laughs> You're that fucking guy now, Fez. You're that fucking guy. Do we all get to split that hundred that you just made? Or Yeah, sure we do. All right. Right, meet me out back, and I'll fucking give you your fucking part of it. Sure. I'm going to fucking share with you. Not for the fooling around, Fez. He wears a C-note. Let's go. I don't have it on me. Then why are you fucking betting? Whoa. I had to get it to you. Let me see what you got. I got 40. That's 40 for me. Pay these other two. All fucking right. 30 apiece. That's the split. All right. 40, 30, 30. Thanks. I'm very happy. All right. Looks like I'm stopping for one cigar on the way home. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dan, you're on Run Fez. Hey, wasn't the main thief in Oliver Twist named Fagan? Let me let me just ask you uh, this, Hicks. How much money you got in your pocket? Uh, I think four dollars or so. Yeah, I don't have any cash. I'm all I'm zero all debit. Yeah. I can't imagine walking around with forty or four or nothing. <laughs> what if something comes up? I'm fucked. It might not even be four dollars. Oh, it's things three, and there's some lottery tickets. Oh, well, they'll come through. <laughs> no, it's two dollars. Excuse me. I've got a wristband to the 2008 Austin City Limits Music Festival. If that's of any interest. And I got a tip on a horse. You got a, so con <laughs> you got a condom in there too? No, I've got that in my room. I did carry a condom around in my wallet, but then I didn't use it for like a month and a half, and I felt really ridiculous walking around with a condom in my wallet. You should just keep one on your deck and fucking feel like <laughs> tonight's the night. No matter what happens, I know it's going to work out for me. 
What's going on over there, BC? Uh, no, just locking up, I think, from getting caught. You want the 40 back? No, I lost the fair and square. How'd you lose the fair and square? I called the fucking guy on you. <laughs> How are you feeling fair about this? Kind of I con. talked you into stealing it. Then I called the guy you stole it from, had him bust you on the air after making you bet. And yet your fucking feeling at the end of that is it happened fair and square. And we, and we already said Troy well, was Mr. Sebastian. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I always figure if I'm dumb enough to walk into something, I deserve what I get. Yeah, I guess you're right, then. You've convinced me. Why should I give you this back? Now you feel upset over it, though? Oh, yeah. What part yeah. is you upset? That it just didn't end up being any fun stealing something from Rob's office. Do you realize how retarded you sound? Oh, right? every day, you, yeah. It's fucking insane that you said to say, as a grown man... I learned a lesson here. I realized it wasn't so much fun stealing something from Rob's office. This is a fucking kid. And he knows that it's not fun to steal tissues from an office. You're a fucking grown man with a white beard. Why did you try to turn this into a Facts of Life episode? I don't know. It was just uh, I've been thinking about it for the past few days. Thinking about what? Um, shoplifting. What? What is he talking on. about? I don't know. I just don't know. I'm going to take this to you, to you again. Okay. You have some crazy bit you put on the air. Uh-huh. Me and Hicks tell you to go down and steal from Rob's office. Yeah, take a little something. When he does, while you're doing it, we tell the kids, call Rob. Tell him what Fez is doing. Tell him to call back in and, and bust Fez. After that, I bet you $100 it wasn't Troy, <laughs> only to admit to you that I was the one who did it. You hand me the 40 that you're fucking carrying, and now you feel bad that it wasn't fun stealing from Rob's office, and you got caught. Right. And falling for everything, too. Not being smart enough to realize that. Smart enough to realize what? That Rob would have gotten a call from you guys. What? It's fucking tissues! It's the dumbest thing in the world! No, he doesn't give a shit about tissues. What are you talking about? I don't know. You just you, you just stole some shit from Rob Cross. What's the big deal? <laughs> I, I'm seriously. I'm I'm fucking baffled even for me this time, and I feel like I've been through the whole thing. So you're feeling now you're sad because you didn't figure out that that the guys in your gang would have done this. Right. Yeah. The reason why we did it is because it's not even real. It doesn't fucking matter. You know, this isn't a bank heist. We didn't fucking hold up a liquor store. You went and took some tissues out of his office. If he was sitting there, he would have said, yeah, go ahead, Fez, take those tissues. Because he didn't even know he had them. Because no man knows he has a box of tissues. Chris Sherman, Fez. Hey, Fez, you keep up on this route, you're going to be on Smoking Gun next. You know that, right? Oh, sure, with the bad mug shots. Because even the ones that people try to look good in, it still comes off awful. Where they try to fix themselves up for a mugshot. Well, you really have to just go as nuts as possible. I'm going to give you a little hint here, Fez. It's bad lighting. You got that fucking industrialized lighting. Nobody can look under that. The cops look like shit. Turn that same thing around and look at and point it at the cops, and they'll look like the guiltiest fucking person in the world. You bring the victim in, shoot them in that lighting, they look fucking guilty. That's called guilt lighting. They know what the <laughs> fuck they're doing. All right, it's time for us to play. Search, search, hurry up and search. Uh, who's the champion right now, Fez? Right now, the champion is Mark Zito from Sirius XM Satellite oh, Radio. Congratulations. Let's bring Mark Zito in. Mark. Mr. B. How you doing, buddy? I'm all right. How are you? None of your goddamn business, Mark. Right now, I found out my partner is a kleptomaniac who stole from Rob Cross. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Spread the word around. He'll get out there. Okay. Yeah, spread the word around. Uh, we're playing search, search, hurry up and search. Who's playing against him, Fez? And this is Joe the Intern from the ONA Show. Welcome, Joe. How you doing, Ronnie B? It's good to see you, my friend. How's everything working out interning for the ONA Show? Just fine. This is my fifth month. Do me a favor. Why don't you tell the listeners something about 
uh, ONA that they never would have known, even though they've been listening for years, something you saw here with an insider's eye. Oh, I don't think I'm allowed to do that, Ronnie V. So you can't even tell us a good thing? No, no. You I'm can't even say a kind thing that you've seen took place? A kind thing? Like maybe Ant helped a bird with a broken wing, something like that. Well, if a bird got into the studio, I think that would be pretty amazing in of its own. Yeah. Right. All right, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A bird got into the ONA studio. Yes. It broke its wing. And Aunt nursed it back to health. Oh. We got that all told to us from Joe, the intern. Thank you, Joe. It's a great story. Joe, I only got to say one thing. You're coming off a little bit of like, like a rat. Like a little bit of a rat squealing on them. Oh, Ronnie, I didn't say anything. Oh, uh, sure you didn't. In the <laughs> meantime, I guess Fez didn't steal. All right. Fez, you feel better now? Uh, I felt like I had to tell Fez before this got out of control. Well, I think I've certainly been jerked back into the uh, oh, oh God, jerk the straight and narrow. Good fuzzy straight, fuzzy straight. Yay, no more. That's the best way. All right, Joe, I'm really pulling for you here because I like you a lot better than Mark Zito. Oh, what? I don't want you to take that in the wrong way, Syracuse. Oh, I don't want you to let that get to you. But there's something about you. That doesn't have that friendly thing. Like, I'll say this. Would you trust Mark Zito to find out where you live, Fess? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Because oh. he ended up stealing his tissues back. I'm sure he would. And by the way, I, I used him to, on his cell phone, call uh, Rob Cross. And Hicks also knew. Yeah. Now, does it piss you off that those guys know and then come to you with it? Well, I thought I would have been nice to have been alerted that the basically the authorities have been alerted. So you didn't answer me there. Do you feel let down that yeah. these guys that you know? Yeah. Would you say you hate them both? Uh, uh, yeah. You hate me, Fez? You hate Hicks? You're the one who stole. I was just trying to get that, those tissues back to the rightful owner. You know what, Hicks? No offense here, and Zeno, no offense, but I got to stand shoulder to shoulder with my partner. Oh. And until you make things good with him. Uh, you're on the outs with me, too. Seriously? Yeah. Can I still play? Yeah, sure, you can still play because you're the reigning champion. Okay, cool. Because you're seriously mad at everybody else. You're mad at the draft house kid, too? Oh, yeah, I'm sure he was in on it. Absolutely. So disappointed. Hate them all, Ron. I thought I was trying to do the right thing. But here's the thing, Fuzzy. You stole. You know it and I know it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I stole. But they, I mean, I was up front. I said I was going down there to steal. And I brought back something. Those guys went behind my back. True. Well, you didn't tell Rob what you were doing. And let's face it, no one's ever been as nice to us as Rob Cross is. Mm -mm. Yeah, he ended up a victim in this. What was he doing, this. wandering across the fucking turnpike <laughs> we talked to him? Just beeps everywhere. I think, I think he was camping on the side of a highway or some shit. He was fucking, he had put a pup tent up in one of those islands in the middle of the fucking turnpike. Is he a drifter? He is. He drifts from town to town. All right, I got a break here. Uh, Fez, you were telling me during the break you came to me and you said you were confused about what people were saying about what you're saying. Right, I just feel like I'm talking in crazy circles that people aren't understanding me. What do you need and to be understood about? Like, I'm not getting, if I'm trying to get a point out that it's not, I'm not getting it out. Tell me one point. I think when I was talking to Rob Cross, I just wasn't, and I just wasn't understanding what was going on in the room. Well, he, he, you took his tissues. Right. So he had a problem with that. You can understand that, right? Yeah, that I understand. You went into his office when he wasn't supposed to be there. What point would you like to make to him? Well, it's, um, that, uh. I guess that the tissues will be returned. Right. He doesn't want them back. He feels disgusted that your fingers are in there. You wanted to tell him, Rob, the other boys made me do this. They talked me into it. Right. Yeah. That way you don't have to take any personal responsibility. It always becomes someone else's fault. Well, that, that, um, no, I mean, I'm, I'm the one who took them. That's right. But no one cares. Right. Either way. You're not in any real trouble. Rob was teasing when he acted like he was mad. Oh, okay. He thinks it's stupid, 
but he's doesn't he's not angry. You thought he was mad at you? I couldn't tell. That's where some of the confusion gets comes in because I couldn't read. He was being on the air, uh-huh. so he was going with a bit. Remember how we used to do? Uh huh. And everything didn't have to be real. Um. So it was all just a bit. Everything that happened here today, first was a bit. Okay. Everybody was playing a character. Uh, Billy, you're on Fez. Hey, guys. Hey, Fezzy. Hey, I've been listening for about four or five years, and Fez, do you saying that you don't think people understand what you're saying is about the first thing that you said that made any sense to me? I think you're making... Uh, here's, uh, Sarah, you're on Fez. Hi. <laughs> why, is, why is your name Sarah, ma'am? Sarah. Oh, Sarah. Yes. Uh, I got a, a kid from Texas running the phones, and he's writing your name down as Sir. <laughs> is this Sir Colin? Gotcha. <laughs> and H. Uh, it all I was also wrote it a couple of times like that. Sarah's on. Sir from Georgia. Yes. What can we do for you, sir? Uh, <laughs> um. Well, I think uh, Fez is getting treated a little, uh, a little mean. I don't. I don't think that's very nice. But also. You're kind of acting like a little bitch, Fez. Stand up for yourself. There it is. Stand up for yourself, Fez. You're, you're not making your point because it doesn't make sense. Right. That's what I worry about. <laughs> yeah. Just just stand up for yourself. They set you up. Kick them in the ass or something. That's why, I, said, that's why I told them that I hate them. Who do you hate? Yeah. Chris Stanley and the Draft House Kid and Mark Zito. I hate them too. No, he's gotten to the center of where his problems are, and it's you three guys. Uh, you three guys were around. Uh, you got you three guys set him up. You three guys called Rob Cross, and you three guys have his forty dollars. He's what? figured it out completely. I got two dollars in my wallet. I got forty. <laughs> I'm holding the fresh forty. Fez, you and I have got to get up a reason to get back at those three guys. All right. You know what you should do? What's that? Steal from them. I'll keep an eye out. I have so little. I have this pair of blue blockers. (laughs) Just don't don't do anything but that. I got an idea, Fez. His blue blockers. (laughs) No. Uh, Craig, you're on the Run of Fez show. What's going on, Ronnie? I'm just curious when uh, Fez is just going to admit that like, half of his anger is towards you. You're the one that makes him look like an ass every day. I mean, granted, like I said before, he makes you look like a rube sitting there doing nothing every day. But when is he going to admit it? Well, wait a minute. What did, what did I have to do with that thing of Fez getting caught? Well, the, the thing is, is, like, you just allow him to sit over there and do nothing. And granted, I guess it's not really your job. That would be up to Rob and anyone else for him not doing his job. But the fact of the matter is, you just wear kid gloves with him all the time. Let him just pretty much sit over there and do nothing and then just cater to his cadences on what he can and can't talk about. Well, I get that part of it, but why why would he be mad at me? Well, you're just as guilty half the time of making him look like an idiot. I mean, granted, he does it to himself. Well, well, tell me one thing I did about him stealing and Rob calling it that I, I was involved in at all. I'm very curious. What do you mean? Like, you weren't... You weren't one of the ones to talk him into going and taking it from Rob Cross? I was the one to do that. What, that? You were the one? Yeah. Okay, so that right there, I mean, but then he just... Okay, and then after that, what do you have? About the Rob Cross thing? Yeah. Or about the fact that he sits there every day and just... No, you you can't fall. Here's all you can come up with, Craig. I'm the one who talks Fez into going in and stealing stuff from Rob. Then I'm the one who called Rob Cross and told him... And then I bet Fez a hundred dollar that it wasn't Troy, and that's it. These other three bastards are the ones who lined up against Fez. They had every opportunity to let me in on any one of those things. I was just trying to get his tissues back to to Rob. Crow. Were you? Yeah, I was. I don't get it at all. And what did I possibly have to do with it, Hicks? Nothing. Three things. I talked Fez into doing it. I called Rob Cross, and then I bet Fez, and then told him it was me. And that was it. Uh, Dustin, you're on running Fez. Hey, I got to agree with that last caller. The problem with fucking Fez is you, Ron. 
What have I done? A, I did one thing. I told him to fucking steal. B, then I called the person he stole from. And then C, bet him it wasn't the person that he thought. Now, if that's my responsibility, yes. But I take no responsibility for what happened today. Other than those three things. And that's it. But I'm not like these other three guys, which are much easier targets to hate. I'm that easy to hate? That In this case, yes. Oh. You have no parents. No. Um, Ron, you're on Fe- uh, Tommy, you're on Ron Fez. I think Fez uh, was right all along. He just thought that David Tommy? was going to be... Tommy. You got me? Tommy, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Tommy. Tommy. Touch me. She'll be. She'll be. She'll be. Touch me. Feel me. Uh, Michaela. Yeah, what's going on? What can I do Hi. for you? Yeah, it's Michaela, the transsexual diva. Hi, guys. Hey, how are you? I, all right. I did this thing. Everybody picks on poor Fezzy, but Fezzy brings it on himself, and then they make you look like the bad guy because you're picking on him. Yeah, you know what? It, it really doesn't matter to me. I mean, I took what Fez got Fez upset today. I had the slightest bit of responsibility for a, I told him to do it. Mm. B, I called the person who told him he did it. C, I bet against Fez for mm. a quick, easy bet.